What's up gamers, welcome back to another tier list video, where this time I'm ranking all 37 of my Mega Collab parts. Yeah, you heard that right, 37. Imagine how many solos I could have made instead of putting all that time into just Mega Collabs, yikes. As you can probably imagine with a list of Collab parts longer than the fucking Bible, I have to lay down some rules for this list. First off, a Mega Collab is generally considered to be a level split between 5 or more people, so you won't be seeing things like my part and volume in this video. I also won't be counting old versions of parts, such as the original Zodiac or Photovoltic 2 parts instead focusing on the final versions made that made it into each of their respective levels. Parts that were made by multiple people, such as our second part in Disentombed, also won't be included. Lastly, I'll be ranking these parts in chronological order to make the video a bit easier to follow, so the parts should get better and better as the video progresses. In theory, at least. As you'll soon find out, I have the creating consistency of a one-armed monkey trying to peel a banana. Like last time, I'll also be ranking these parts in relation to each other, not other geometry dash levels, meaning just because something goes in S tier, it's not automatic automatically the best thing in the game. Alright, everyone finally caught up? I sure hope so, because I have 37 shit stains to go to, so let's get started. My first ever recorded Mega Collab part doesn't even have a name funnily enough, so I'll just be referring to it as that Mega Collab part. Not that it deserves a better name anyways. This was supposed to be used in a 1.9 themed level, but I clearly missed the fucking memo since I went ahead and used moving objects in a completely underdeveloped custom background. The 3D is also a complete train wreck. I can't believe that not only did I never see anything wrong with it, but apparently no one else did either since this part was accepted into the level no problem. I also think it's funny how I slapped the word nice in the middle of nowhere since there very clearly is not a single nice thing about this part and it does not even deserve the attention it's getting right now. F tier. Anyone surprised? Next up is my part in Fired, an old Team Dashcrafted Mega Collab, and if you were big into the Geometry Dash community back in 1.9, hearing the phrase Team Dashcrafted might have just excited you into popping a half job. While my nostalgia for TDC is very large, this part is a prime example of why they didn't last long into Update 2.0. Like the previous part, I fucked up the 3D, which I'm sure will be a consistent trend for these first few parts. I also made possibly the best rendition of my logo of all time, just look at the exquisite detail and craftsmanship. Plus, these block designs were definitely stolen from some obscure Chase 97 or Namtar level, which is another common thing I did back in the day. A fun challenge for you guys watching this right now would be to try to point out every stolen design in each of these parts and what level they're from. I would try to turn it into a fun drinking game, but we'd all be dead by the 10th part. Did I mention this is going to F tier? I've surprisingly only made two healthy collab parts in my entire creating career, so maybe there's a bit more Jesus in me than most of us thought. One of these fuckups is called Bloodfall, and I actually think it's a fair step up from the first two parts I've shown. That's probably due to a better understanding of level composition and filling in empty space, although I don't like how there's clearly some inspiration from the core style happening here. Thankfully I got that shit out of my system pretty quickly. I don't have much else to say aside from I'm pretty happy with how this turned out despite it being almost 5 years old. D tier. My first collab part of 2.1 is called Oral Philosophy, and it's actually pretty interesting. I'm very satisfied with how the first half of the part turned out, and I actually consider it to be ahead of its time, aside from the fact that you can see above the level. Good job, me. Designs like these weren't overused this early into the update, and I think the color scheme works well. I even included a cool little monster man, who for the sake of this video will be named Francis. Francis was one of my first attempts at decent movement and simple animation, and I'm happy he's now a certified part of the Yakum Nugget lore. The second half of this part is where things fall apart. Not only is it significantly lazier than the first, but it's blatantly ripped from some old codex work. This also begins the extremely long and annoying arc in the manga where I make my name bigger than the Statue of Liberty, which will start getting especially bad as we progress into the middle section of 2.1. If only the first half of this part existed, then I honestly might have gone with a C tier, but since my ass couldn't help but to copy famous creators back in the day, it unfortunately knocks it down to D tier. Yeah, so remember when Trusted did the funny thing where he moved some spikes around in Yadakurasu and then the community lost their shit? Nerf this was born as a result, and of course I had an extremely 2017 part in it. The only real highlight of this part is the animation for my logo. That was considered clean as hell back then. This part in general is fairly clean for the time it was made in, although I don't know what the fuck I was doing with the giant glow pinwheel in the background of the second half of the part. It completely ruins what little immersion a part like this gives off in the first place. I know glow levels are kinda a meme today, but be glad we didn't get stuck with this. I guess I'll go with detail. Hey, Gadolinium. To this day, this is some of the most fun I've ever had building a collab part. At the time, I tried lots of new effects and design choices that I never had before, and it really paid off. I'm sad that this level was never actually released, as it had some damn good parts in it and could have easily been a big level back in the day. Although a lot of stuff is obviously messy and unpolished, the base design and atmosphere worked out exactly how I wanted them to. This is another part I don't have a ton to say about, as I think it speaks for itself fairly well. 
Considering the time this was made in and how influential it turned out to be for the rest of my creating career, I'm actually going with a C tier. The decoration is probably D tier worthy, but as I mentioned, this does have some extra personal quirks for me. Now it's time for the funny level, Pumped Up Kicks. There's some really low hanging fruit when it comes to jokes I could make for this section, but most of them are shot out of style. <laughs> Thankfully, the part itself serves as a pretty good joke. It's about as basic as you can get with a part like this except for the text that pops up, and even that was made with the basic in-game font. The only thing decent about this part is the layering, but if that's the only standout feature in a part you made, then there's probably something wrong. And I still think I somehow had one of the best parts in this clickbaity joke of a level. Being shot to death with several lethal weapons is preferable to watching this abomination of a level that uses a song associated with being shot to death by several lethal weapons. D tier. Next up is Instantaneous, which in my opinion is easily one of my most forgettable Mega Club parts. Boy of the Cones forced me to make this part in a single day, which you can hear me complaining about in the background if you check out the original video. But hey, for the time I'm fairly impressed with how well it turned out with only a one day budget. I even tried my hand at some effects, which only blocked the entire fucking screen and made the level slightly more unenjoyable. If this wasn't so rushed it might have actually hit low C tier territory, but as it stands it's just D tier. Supersonic is a half-meme remake of Supersonic I said yes to being in because it's Sonic, of course I did. And what's funny is that both this and Instantaneous use the same song and I finished both parts within two weeks of each other. As of writing this script, I also just realized that this part was too made in a single day. The parallels are insane. These two collab parts should definitely be shipped together, just saying. As for the part itself, it's insanely mediocre. Today we call this style generic, but back in the day of dinosaurs, we called it, well, probably generic. At least this time I didn't add 3D. Can't mess up the 3D if there is none, am I right boys? Oh what a surprise, it's another D tier. This bad girl is really starting to get full now. One of my first attempts at hosting a mega club resulted in a little project called Electrical Ecstasy, and I'm really sad I didn't finish it. The finished and work in progress parts were surprisingly good, and even my part is decent all things considered. The worst offense it commits is getting lazy in the last couple seconds, but considering just a couple minutes ago we were covering incorrect 3D and stolen designs, things are really starting to improve in the Yakub Nugget creating department. I don't think there's a lot to talk about here since I feel like most of this actually aged fairly well. This is a well deserved C tier in my opinion, and my nostalgia boner is practically screaming at me to hurry up and drag this level out of its grave. So uh, yeah, wink wink. Now for Zodiac, which not counting my original Photovoltic 2 part is what really put me on the map in terms of creating. It's also one of my most well known collab parts to this day, which makes sense considering it's in a top 3 demon. A lot of people despise this part due to a couple ball timings in the middle of the part, and to those people I say get fucking good. I was able to consistently do this part on a 144Hz monitor with a total of zero extremes under my belt 4 years ago. You actually mean nothing to me. The worst thing about this part is this weird looping white shit I did, but that's removed in the actual level, so basically this part is looking pretty good. I also included another epic monster man in this part, so now Francis gets a buddy named Larry. I promise he doesn't bite. Zodiac goes in C tier. Twilight Delta was an old 1.9 themed level that was never finished to my knowledge, which again is a shame since it falls into that category of probably would have been really good at the time if it had actually been released. My part was one of the worst from what I remember, but it fits in okay as a small break part. Purple also makes everything look passable, that's a general tip for all you upcoming creators out there, just don't tell Walsh I said that or he might piss his pants again. I also used some of the most cursed 3D in the entire game, but back then pretty much everyone was doing it so it wasn't a very big deal. At the end of the day, this is pretty much a filler part in what was my insane same Mega Club spree of 2017, and as such it finds a home in the D tier. Y'all like Glow? Even if you said yes, there's a greater chance of you winning billions off of the Powerball than liking this part. My part in Spatial Rend is my least favorite Mega Club part I've ever made, even if our unnamed Andy with its incorrect 3D. I mean, you can't even see what little design I did put into the part because the level is too busy trying to fry your eyeballs like a runny egg. It got toned down slightly in the final release, but even with that, there is nothing redeeming about this part. Just go to the bottom of the fucking F tier and think about what you've done. Next up is Dimension Breaker. If you're familiar with this level, then you might be saying, hey, I don't remember Jakob having yet another Everglowed part in this, and you would be right. I got replaced by Anixie, who probably ended up making the better part. I don't know, I don't feel like either of us produced major showstoppers here, but hey, a part is a part. What I like about this part is that it shows I improved a lot off the clusterfuck known as Spatial Rend. There are a lot of similar traits in both parts, especially with the glow impulses, but everything is much more balanced and organized here. It also feels like I'm beginning to gain a more fine-tuned sense of depth and layering, which is pretty cool. So even though this part got abandoned in a ditch alongside my will to live, it still served its purpose. I'm split between C and D tier here, so I guess I'll go with C since D tier is about to burst. 
ATM Marble Slaps, and yes, I just pronounced his name like that. I can't even really explain why, because the level is extremely unbalanced in every way possible. But remember, everything I say is straight fact, there is no arguing. My part in ATM Marble marked a point in my creating career where I really started to work with a consistent style. I like that I started mixing in small effects and rotating objects to stand out among all the glow, and of course it helps that the song perfectly complemented what I was going for. This part also aged surprisingly well. I can watch it multiple times in a row without cringing at something, which is a first for this list so far, also making this the first B tier part. You know, I remembered my gridlocked part a lot more fondly prior to watching it again for this video. Man, it did not age well. While you can see I kept a similar base style to the last few parts I've talked about, this overall part is far messier. I tried to cram way too many ideas that I didn't know how to properly execute into a 5 second section and it really drags down what could have been a fairly satisfying part. Back to me ripping shit from other creators, the lightning was stolen from Sir Punch if I remember correctly, although back then everyone in the great Aunt Marie was stealing that lightning effect, so I'm honestly not too bothered by it. I'm really disappointed in this part because some simple polishing could have probably put it up there with ATM Marble, but I can't even justify putting it in the C tier as is. One of my most infamous collab parts has to be in Crimson Planet. Let me start by clarifying one thing, I did not make the gameplay for this part, it was all Wushi's brainchild. To this day, I still have people complaining to me about how bad this part plays, which I guess makes sense since I blocked the screen with another logo larger than the Roman Empire. As for the decoration, it looks like AT Marble, but if I rushed it and made it red, which, spoiler alert, is exactly what happened. If I remember correctly, it was made in under 3 days, but at this point in my career, I should have been able to pump out something better than this with that amount of time. I also think it's funny how blatantly obvious it is that I just gave the fuck up with the last couple structures. I got nothing else to say except hell theme level bad. D tier bitches. Throwback Machine is a level I'm sure almost none of you have heard of, which is a shame because I think it had a cool concept and executed it well. The point of the level was that each part showcased a different update, thus the name Throwback Machine. And while other levels today have done the same thing, I'm pretty sure we were one of the first to try it, and a lot of the parts actually looked really good. Maybe it's a stretch, but it would be cool to see this get rated today. My part was one of the more forgettable ones in the level, but it still did its job well enough to fit in, and I really like the end screen I made. This is an extremely mediocre and harmless part, so I think the C tier works perfectly. Similar to Gridlocked, my photovoltaic 2 part has fallen hard for me with a rewatch. The biggest issue is the insane reliance on glow sunrays. There's enough of those damn things to take over China. I unironically prefer the old version that I was asked to remake, and that thing is some generic ass. The only slight redeeming quality I can find about this part is that I finally started experimenting around with multicolored pulses. Wonder how many more parts we have to go through before I start making basic designs polychromatic. This is pretty much another nothing part for me, D tier. Thankfully Breakout Redux is a step up. I think having a decent part to base mine off of helped a lot, and you can see I wasn't quite as trigger happy when it came to spamming glow sunrays, although there's still a metric fuck ton of them. This also marks the beginning of the chicken leg era for many Yakub Nugget collabs to come, although you'll see I'm not very consistent with it soon. I like that I tried a quirky little meteor effect that turned out alright, and overall I would say this is one of my cleaner parts for the time, ignoring the glow rays. While it didn't do the original part justice, it's still decent enough to warm its way into a low C. Coco Bello is yet another 1.9 themed mega club I joined, and can I just mention how fun the name Coco Bello is to say real fast? Like, Coco Bello, Coco Bello, Coco Bello. I don't know, it's fun. Around this time, my mentor Panudo had me doing slave work for him almost daily, all because ATM Marble turned out so well. As you'll soon be able to tell, I was Panudo's mega club whore for most of 2018, but at least this part was easy to make. I remember building most of it on mobile during a beach trip a few years back, so I can definitely dump all the flaws on that, right guys? Jokes aside, I think it looks fine for its time. Yeah, there's a lot of small shit to pick on, but like most parts in this era, it's passable. In fact, I would go as far as to consider putting it in the B tier if the colors weren't god awful. Just look at the shade of green. I must have had that green horse meat you find floating around in public bathroom stalls from time to time in mind when I was creating this. C tier for Coco. While Spatial Ren may very well be my worst collab part, I think my part in Have a Drink is a close second. This was supposed to be a Hein style collab, so how did I handle this unique and universally loved style? I drowned it in glow sun rays. I mean, come on boys, how the fuck am I supposed to come back from that. I should have just made a chord part and tried to pass it off as Hein style, it might have been less offensive. Some coloration improvements were made in the final level, but I'm only judging my own work here and god this is awful. I'm gonna go ahead and publicly apologize to Heinz right now. What I've done is comparable to Logan Paul going on a nice hike through the woods in terms of disrespect. I'm sorry and I will do better. F tier. 
After that GME stock level catastrophe, I'm happy to say we're finally in the clear. From this point onwards, I don't think any of my parts dip below a C tier, and Fervent Glare is a nice way to start things off. Out of all the collabs I was in that never got released for whatever reason, Fervent Glare has to be the best. This level had a stacked lineup and some damn good decorated parts, and the gameplay for it was extremely fun, which I would know since I made a large portion of it. When the level died, it was about 75% decorated, so I'm not really sure why it was never finished, but with Mlex's Geometry Dash career committing suicide harder than a comic Kazi pilot, it'll probably never be released. My part here is pretty decent, especially when it comes to color usage and layering. While I still haven't learned to lay off with the fucking glow quite yet, things are starting to take a step in the right direction. I think this is a high C tier. Belloc is the only part where I'll be breaking the rule of using my most up-to-date version of said part on my channel, as even more changes were made to it by myself and Panudo without an additional video being released to cover it. With that being said, I'm happy with how the part ended up turning out. I think I made a part that fit very well with the vibe of the song and the atmosphere of the level as a whole. I'm also glad Panuda made me mix up some different colors, as the blue complements the orange nicely, especially in the second half. I even managed to find an acceptable balance of glow rays to literally any other object in the entire damn part. I do have to complain about the hell that was decorating this part. Before making a part in any Panuda mega collab, please know that they are complete unfair bullshit to decorate. I swear not a single block in the whole layout for my part was directly on the X or Y axis. It was pain. Worth it though. Finally another B tier. Between Belloc and Unearth, I finally slowly started working themes into my collab parts, which is huge for me later on. It's not great in Unearth, but hey, some whack ass moldy pipes and a few sewer bats or something. I also showcased some of my best glow effects here, like the swirly thing that literally every glow creator started using soon after. I'm also really satisfied with how well the end section turned out. It's super intense, and I wish I'd stuck with that style for more of the part. On top of that, my layering skills are on full display here, and while basic layering isn't hard to pull off, it's amazing to me how many creators still struggle with it today. The this also looks like the point where I realized the hue slider exists, which is a nifty tool that helps me slowly break out of my monochromatic slumber. My unearthed part is decent, all things considered. Another B tier. To this day, Distraught showcases some of my best glow work and designs in general. A big reason for that is that I finally decided to fuck off with the giant glow sunrays, for the most part at least. Good job, Jakob. Almost 30 club parts in and you finally learned. Continuing on my creating Ws, it looks like this is where I learned that different movement easings actually do different things, and with my layering being on point as ever, this part was a recipe for success. On top of that, I think some of my best pulse work is shown here, and I really dig the particle effects that float around in the first half of the part. In this footage, you might notice a few instances where you can see above or below the ground, but this time I actually cared enough to fix them, yay me. The shot being the first A tier part is well deserved. Ah yes, Frostbound, the prototype Yakub art part. If you're one of those sad souls who preferred my style back in the days of glow spam, then this is where it all started going downhill for you. For my first real attempt at art, I think this turned out okay. Yeah, some of the shit thrown in feels a bit random, but I was experimenting around and trying to get a hang on the style, as you'll be able to easily see since there are still two more Christmas collab parts to cover on this list. As usual, my name is large and in charge, but this time it's excusable for at least the top portion since I slapped a Santa hat on that bitch. It's the Christmas spirit, guys. Give it a pass. I like the ski lift I added at the end that works as both a gameplay and deck creation set piece. And of course, my man Ronnie is just straight chillin' at the bottom, although please don't tell him that he's fucked once spring hits, it would really ruin his mood. B tier. Relentless Delusion sounds more like a heroic dose of mushrooms or a visit from my sleep paralysis demon than a Geometry Dash Mega Club title, but here we are. I think this can be described as the most Yakub part there is, at least when throwing my old glow style into the mix. It hits all the basic notes, from the mildly complex layered ground with decoration scattered across, to the glow pillars and sun rays, and even yet another monochromatic color scheme. Oh well, I made this in under 4 hours, and under those circumstances I'm still pretty proud of this to this day. I'm a bit conflicted between a high C and a low B, but since this is much cleaner than most of the shit in C tier, Relentless Delusion slides in B. My part in 13 has the best block design I've ever made and you cannot tell me otherwise. I guess it still falls under my glow style and follows a lot of its tropes, but the general quality of design decided to bump itself the fuck up here and it shows. I have zero complaints about this part aside from the version that was put onto the final level. The Wolk or whoever was merging decided it was a good idea to add color to the end and it completely ruins the vibe it gave off in the original, especially when the object color starts flashing. It's like the Geometry Dash equivalent of those hip and totally relatable companies who changed their logos to a rainbow nightmare every time Pride Month rolls around. At least make it look good if you're going to go through the effort in the first place. This part slaps though, and if you disagree, you're probably either brain dead or generic queso. It's with great honor and pride that I bestow 13 the first S tier on this list. 
You guys can probably tell that I remember update 1.9 very fondly considering how many parts I've made based around it, and the best one of those has to be Azura. I know it's hard to look at something 1.9 style and call it amazing these days when Grenada Tacos is dropping actual works of art made in the 1.9 editor every other month, but I still think Azura looks good overall. It's really fun to make a casual design based part with no major strings attached, and that's exactly what I did. I also love the vibe the memory section gives off. 1.9 memory parts are as fucked as a crackhead baby these days, so I took things into my own hands and made a decent one. I don't really have anything else to say, so I guess I'll go ahead and chuck this part in B tier. After the dumpster fire that was have a drink, I'm glad I got the chance to redeem myself in Torg. Of course, I'm still not doing Hein style complete justice, but at least I'm not flat out pissing on his grave. Like last time, I added quite a bit of glow, which is very un -Heinz like but here I think it helped the colors and energy of the part stand out in a very beneficial manner. Everything in this part from the blocks to the ground to the air deco work together very well and contribute to the ingesting battery acid vibes the part gives off. I had a fair amount of fun building this part, so you can expect to see me release some more Heinz related work sometime in the future. This is a solid B tier. I'm sure all of you are familiar with my part in Disentombed, and we all know it's a damn good part, so I'm sure you're expecting me to send it straight to the S tier. Well, in a twist on par with the best of End Night Shyamalan, Disentombed is going in the A tier. It does a lot of things right. It's a great blend between the glow style and good theming, it has two different sections which helps with progression and uniqueness, and it has some very well synced flashes and effects. I guess my main problem is that I find it too messy. I removed a bit of decoration from the part while messing around in the editor a couple months back, and liked the simpler version a lot better. In full detail, there's almost too many objects for your eyes to process at all in one watch, let alone while playing. I also think the last couple seconds are noticeably worse than the rest of the part, but it's minor enough to not be a huge issue. I'm sure a lot of you will feel that this is an S tier part, and a few months ago I might have agreed with you, but I guess the glow style is finally starting to lose its charm for me. I love making my levels match with their song title. As you can tell when I made White Ice, which uses the song Black, sorry, African American Ice, bringing that joke back again since it was so well received last time. This is the second Christmas part I attempted to make, and a clear step up from Frostbound. It's also leaning more towards design than pure art this time, but I think it struck the balance really well. I really started to pay attention to small details here, like with the falling icicles or the ice cracking on the blocks when you land on them. As with every Jakob Christmas adventure, I included an absolutely wonderful ski lift, but this time it got demoted to a background object. While this part feels a bit messy and some of the layering is questionable, there's still a very coherent part with a lot of charm, leading piss yellow ice straight into A tier. Haunted Manor is a part on a budget, and that budget was rammed with the power of God straight into the background. The custom background here absolutely carries. It turned out exactly how I wanted it to and gives off the perfect energy. Then you have the blocks, which are extremely average in the first half and blank fucking canvases in the second. Yet again, I can sorta of hide behind the excuse of this part being made in a single day, but come on, these blocks are just awful. At least you can be distracted by these massive swinging blades that have less accurate hitboxes than actual geometry dash objects. Oh well, at the end of the day, this is a harmless part made mostly for fun, and I think the background carries hard enough to let Haunted Manor slide into B tier. I wasn't sure whether or not I would include my part in Hades on this list. Both myself and the host of this level lost my part due to save errors, so the version of this part you're watching right now will never see the light of day on the servers. I'll eventually be making a better version of this part, which is why I was considering not putting it in this video to begin with, but hey, this is already the longest video I've ever made, why not give myself even more editing to do? This is one of the few design based parts where I actually broke my monochromatic curse, and I think the results are pretty damn good. Creating a consistent atmosphere through glow and colors is something I've managed to get quite good at and I think this part shows it well. As with a lot of my parts, it gets hella lazy towards the end which keeps it out of S tier, but I think a well deserved A tier is in order. Ah yes, Reactor Core, my golden child. This is without a doubt the best Mega Collab part I have ever made from both my perspective and almost certainly yours. I split this part into two halves, and both of them managed to look great. The first half takes you through a dry, desolate desert outside the power plant, and it features what's probably my best custom background to this day. There are some cool prickly boys that appear at the bottom of the screen along with some giant pipes that just randomly exist. Don't really have the lore to those, just thought they looked cool. The second half has you entering the factory, and I love the transitional door I made going into it. Once you're inside, you get to witness the scene terrified Chernobyl workers saw seconds before the place went boom boom, along with some toxic sludge that would probably make you grow an extra cock if you're exposed to it for more than a few seconds, which the icon in this video definitely is, poor thing. If you don't like this part, then I honestly don't know what to say to you. I love this part with a passion. Definite S tier. Ending off on a positive note is my final and most recent Mega Club part, which is the third annual Jakob Christmas level, Snowblind. I'm not going to talk too much about this since it's very fresh and I'm sure all of you have seen it at this point, but I can say it was extremely fun to make. I built most of it in calls with my girlfriend, which spawned the creation of the legendary Chad Michael. 
and receiving great feedback from the rest of the Snowblind team was a huge plus. While this doesn't match up to Reactor Core due to it being less intense and not involving two fantastic halves, one great segment that does exactly what it set out to do secures Snowblind the final spot in the S tier. So yeah, holy shit, that's finally everything. Like last time, I'm curious to see what you guys think about this list, and I'm interested to hear your own rankings. Since I can confirm from experience that 37 parts is a metric ass load to rank, maybe give your top 10 in the comments and explain why. I also don't like doing this often, but this video took so fucking long to make, so please like and share this if you enjoyed it. Until next time guys, love y'all. Peace.